In today's video, we are going to go over developmental activities that are absolutely essential to improve your walking, your balance, confidence, and your overall mobility. The exercises we're going to go over today not only should be incorporated into the early stages of recovery, but are really activities that we should be incorporating into our routines throughout life to increase our mobility as we age, or at least maintain our mobility as we age, and definitely prevent disability as we age. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health to live an overall more mobile, more active, pain-free, happier, healthier, disability-free life. So before we dive into the exercise, it's good to just get a little background as to why we should or why it would be beneficial to incorporate developmental activities. So developmental skills are movement skills that we learned early in life that prepared us for being able to walk, jump, go up and down stairs, and do everything that we just unconsciously do to get through our, to move through our environment and get through our day. So if you think about, if you have kids, when you were raising kids, when they were a baby, they were kind of just like a little sack of potatoes with appendages sticking out, and then they learned how to extend and flex. But really they did all of that on their back with their back fully supported. Then they started to learn how to roll. So they actually learned how to coordinate muscle groups together. A lot of times those were patterns. So they would flex up and they'd roll onto their stomach if they were on their back or if they were on their stomach, they extend everything and they kind of learned that that would roll them on to their back. From there, kind of learned how to get on their hands and knees. A few months later, they learned how to get onto one knee or maybe two knees to actually start pulling up on stuff. And then of course, then they start pulling up on stuff with their arms and that kind of sets the stage for being able to stand and walk. And if you visualize that, every skill kind of built on the skill before it. But then in adult rehabilitation, a lot of times we just jump straight to walking because that is the most valuable skill to get back in order to be able to move around in your environment. We're a little bit too big to be crawling around on the floor to get from our bed to our bathroom and rolling really isn't efficient. So of course we just jump straight to walking. However, those skills built the foundation that allow us to be able to walk, jump, run, hop, go up and down stairs. And so they are good skills to occasionally go back to, to make sure that we are moving in our environment in the most efficient way possible. So. Right now, we're gonna kind of go through those developmental milestones again, but add a little variety to, in, to them, adultify them a little bit, and make them a little bit more challenging for some of you that are higher level and you're already walking, you don't have a fear of falling, you have pretty good balance, you have no history of falls, don't worry, there will be exercises in here for you as well that are beneficial, again, to maintain your mobility as you age and to decrease your risk of disability into late adulthood. So for this exercise, it might look pretty familiar. We're just working on rolling, but we're kind of adultifying it a little bit and we're trying not to use kind of those gross patterns that infants use. We're trying to kind of isolate joint movement a little bit, but it is an excellent activity. Rolling is so, so, so important. A, you don't really need to be able to get on the floor. You could do it in bed if you're not comfortable getting on the floor yet. But B, if you fall, you absolutely need to be able to roll from your back to your stomach and vice versa to get out of a position maybe that you're in that's not gonna be ideal for helping you to get to standing or transition to standing. So again, you're just gonna roll by bringing your leg up and across your body. And then to roll back from your stomach to your back, you wanna bring that leg behind you and use that to roll, trying not to use your arms for this variation. Leg up, over back and back.
Now, this might also look familiar to you. The reason that babies kind of do this is with their trunk supported, they're learning how to gain head control, which is really important with walking. So I'm throwing you kind of three, I'm showing you kind of three different variations all in one. All of them really focused on kind of the shoulders and the head, gaining more control of your shoulders and your head. In particular, when you get to walking, really being able to keep your chest up, especially for those of you that flex over. So the first one, you're just going to work on just lifting your head. Try not to push with your arms, but just lifting your head. Then if you can, and you have the mobility, now try and push with your arms and kind of work on lifting that chest a little bit, kind of using your arms to help you. Uh, this is one way to that'll kind of lead into our next set of skills, which is going to be on your hands and knees, as well as being able to get up off the floor is learning how to push with your arms. So whether you're working on your head control or you want to set yourself up for success for the next skill, using those arms to push up. And then to really work on that upright posture, if you're someone that really flexes over trying to lift your chest, head, and shoulders. All right, now this developmental skill might look familiar because now we're getting from laying on our stomach into a crawling position. But again, if this is an exercise that you feel like you want to skip over, remember, if you want to get down off the floor, being able to go from your stomach to your all fours is absolutely essential to being able to get off the floor. So we're basically just going to go from your stomach, push back to all fours on your stomach, push back to all fours. Now, if you're someone that has a lot of spasticity and your leg just locks out straight and you cannot bend it, a couple of options is one is to put your feet against a wall so that you can push with your arms. Even if you push with one arm, a lot of times by just blocking your not allowing your feet to move, it makes it a little bit easier. Sometimes you're just going to have to skip over this skill. I've done other videos where I go over how to do this if you're trying to get up off the floor. But for the purpose of exercising, uh, if you can't do it without your legs shooting out, it just might not be the right activity for you. So again, I know a lot of you, because um, you talk about it in the comments, your leg just locks out straight and you can't bend it to get back into that position. I would just skip over the activity in this video for the purposes we're doing it in this video. Uh, and go back to some of the other videos that I've done where I've shown how to get up off the floor where I give different strategies on how to do that. But here you're just going to go from your stomach, push back, back to your stomach, push back, stomach, push back. So for this exercise, so far what we've done, our trunk has been supported, but notice that something we celebrate with kids is when they can sit unsupported, so that when they can sit without someone having to hold their back or without having like a boppy pillow around them, that's actually a really pretty huge milestone. And it should be something that we should also strive for if we're in the recovery process as well. The nice thing about working on skills sitting down without back support or working on that posture in sitting is that it takes the legs out of it. So if you are someone that you are a little bit unsteady on your feet, it's a great way to work on posture. I prefer it sitting on the ground versus sitting on a chair without back support. Requires a little bit more hip mobility. And with your legs up, it does kind of stabilize the hips a little bit more versus sitting in a chair or sitting on some kind of a plinth and having your legs in more of like a dependent position. So we call this circle sitting. So either you can try circle sitting. If you have the flexibility, you can bring your legs out in front of you. I'm sitting on a little block. That makes it a little bit easier and you don't really have to have as much flexibility in your hips. But I do think doing some variation of sitting on the floor without back support is hugely valuable when it comes to further on in the more advanced skills of standing and walking. So either circle sitting or with your legs out in front of you. And then we're just going to add an arm activity just to kind of adultify it a little bit and really work on those posture muscles just a little bit more. And you're just going to raise those arms up.
All right, now moving right along, we're going from kneeling to what we call tall kneeling. So great exercise to kind of really isolate those hips. I've shown that in other videos for that very reason. Absolutely critical muscles when it comes to walking and being able to push back into the ground when your foot actually makes contact with the ground and it needs to support your body weight. But also it is a transition skill to that it's required to go from being on the floor to standing. So again, you're just gonna squat back. If you need to, you can place a little yoga block or even a pillow on your uh, feet in order to raise you up a little bit if this is hurting your knees. And then you're just gonna come up, go back down. If you can go all the way down, go all the way down, and then back up, really squeezing that bottom, lifting your chest, and then back down and back up. So that's kneeling to tall kneeling. Now, once we get in tall kneeling, there's a lot of activities that you can do that'll strengthen your entire body. So they're great just to really incorporate at least one or two of these into your current home exercise routine for not just being a developmental skill for walking, but just really overall strengthening. You're, we're gonna put your hand down, leg out to the side, back in and back up, hand down, leg out to the side, back in and back up, hand down out, in, up, hand down, out, in, up. Now, if that's pretty easy for you, this one might not be as easy, but now next, instead of moving the leg out to the side, we're gonna bring the leg forward, down, and up, hands down, bring the leg forward, bring the leg back, and up, down, forward, back, and up. All right, and then next, to isolate those hips even further, we're gonna kind of take the arms out of it, and this will require a little bit more strength in your legs, but you're just gonna go from kneeling to half kneeling and back. And again, this isn't just to learn how to get off the floor. This is just a great activity just for overall lower body strengthening and back. This is tall kneeling to half kneeling. All right, now we're going to do the reverse. So we're gonna do things in standing. This is for those of you that are a little bit higher level. Again, I just wanna add a little variety add kind of a developmental skill to your home exercise routine and a little variety in adding to your leg strengthening program. So you're just gonna go from kneeling, bring one leg forward, push and stand up, and then reverse it down to one knee, opposite knee, rotate and back up. Again, down to one knee, other knee, bring the opposite leg up and back up and then reverse it. Opposite knee, down, down, up, and up. Do that enough times, you will feel your heart rate come up a little bit, and you're also getting a pretty good leg strengthening workout out of that. So for this exercise, if you've ever seen babies, kind of when they're in that phase where they're transitioning from crawling to walking, a lot of times they do like kind of like a lot of bear crawling where they just have their hands and their feet on the ground. This is kind of tapping into that a little bit. Some people call this like a modified burpee. That's usually what I refer to it as. She's just gonna put your hands down on the ground, walk those feet back, walk those feet up, and stand up. Hands go down, walk those feet back, walk those feet up, and stand up. All right, now this is kind of one of the variations of either between bear crawling and crawling. But again, I think it taps into some of those developmental sequences a little bit. Basically, you're just gonna kind of get into a plank position, bring uh, alternating knees kind of towards the opposite elbow. So again, down into a plank position, elbow to knee, elbow to knee, and then just repeat.
So another kind of twist on a developmental activity is kind of like a bear crawl. You can either keep your knees floating off of the ground. For some of us, that's the more preferred like adultified version uh, to save our knees a little bit if it's a little bit uncomfortable on your knees. But you can also just do regular crawling. Taps into a lot of muscles. Also, it definitely is a precursor exercise for walking. So that's the easier variation. And then there's a more advanced variation. And that is it for this video. Again, PDF handout of all the exercises that we went over in this video. Link for that to get in instant access to that is in the description below. If you like this video and you like this type of video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and turn on that notification bell so that you'll get notified every time I upload new videos. If you want exercises throughout the week, you can head on over to Instagram where I post one to two videos every single week, not here on YouTube. If you wanna go a little bit deeper, you can join our gold membership program. With that program, you'll get access to an entire library of exercises that I use with my patients that I see in person as part of their home exercise program. It's all in a software system where you can search by exercise, by body part, to get to the exact exercises that meet you where you're at in your recovery process, as well as a new feature that we have is that you can print handout. So if you don't necessarily want to come back to and log in every single time, you can print a handout version of your home exercise program within that software. With your membership, monthly membership, you will also get access to our Discord channel and to our monthly lives where you can submit questions in advance and we meet once a month where I answer all of your questions. To learn more about our gold membership program, link for that is in the description below. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.